just some quick do's. So keep it to one page. There are a few exceptions to this, not many at this point, you know, um, again, keep it simply stated, get the, get the most important information to them, give them in the, and only that. Um, use can be consistent in your formatting. Use bullets, not paragraphs. Again, keep it, you know, to the point, get right to the point. Easy to read font, avoid underlining. Um, and all caps and bold face text make an impact and make words stand out. And you want to do that, but you know, just make sure you're consistent in whatever you're, whatever you're doing. Um, but I definitely, you know, you're having your name bold, having the sections in bold. Um, I like to see titles, you know, in bold and sometimes italics, depending, you know, again, you want your titles to stand out to whatever you've done. Let's just say though that you're writing a resume and you're like, oh my gosh, I was, you know, but I really want to know this, but it can't fit on my resume. What am I going to do? So you can include it in your cover letter. So instead of not saying anything and not letting you know, you could also in your cover letter in that second or third paragraph inject, in addition to what's on my resume, I also worked or was part of whatever, whatever you want them to know. Again, but you really have to ask yourself for everything you list on your resume, especially if you have a lot of information, you're not sure what to put, what to include. Ask yourself, put yourself in their seat. Is this important that they know this about me? And if it is, then definitely include it either in your resume or in your cover letter. Or if it's, if you're like, gosh, you know what? They probably don't need to know that I did this. It's really not relevant to this job, to the skills and the position itself, the company organization, just leave it out. If you have LinkedIn accounts, that's where everything goes. Um, so if any of you are wondering, gosh, you know, if you're struggling with your, that one page, you put everything in your LinkedIn. So if they're really considering you, they're gonna look at your LinkedIn and they're gonna see, oh gosh, they were also part of this or did this. So if you're, if I, if you're wondering, which by the way, LinkedIn, you definitely wanna be in LinkedIn at some point if you're not already. Again, employers wanna see us in there and you wanna be in there because it's a great place to be found and it's a great place for you to find jobs. And I just have to stress that employers today are relying the most on LinkedIn to find their talent. So you need to be in there right, to be found, and you have to look good, just like your resume. And once your resume is done, it's very easy to create your LinkedIn. So resumes that don't get interviews, spelling errors, typos, poor grammar, absolutely, you will not, I'll, I can almost guarantee you will not get an interview if you apply for a job and you have typos, misspelled their names, whatever. I mean, it's, if it looks bad, if it's too wordy, if it doesn't look good, if you have an unprofessional email address, and believe it or not, and I have to say this a lot of, you know, not a lot, but I mean, too many, one is too many have unprofessional email addresses and it's not a good, <laughs> it's not a good impression. If you're unqualified, if you just don't have enough of what they want is you won't get an interview. Um, I want to just talk about that for a minute. Um, so when you're looking at job descriptions and applying for jobs, if as long as you have the majority of skills and experience education that they want, apply. If you don't have it all, but you have the, the majority, apply. But pay really good, close attention to the qualifications. So if they say bachelor's degree required, and you don't have a bachelor's degree, don't apply. If they say associate or bachelor's degree recommended and you don't have it, apply. So be really, pay attention and, and read really closely what they've listed. Employers spend a lot of time, sometimes a lot more than you realize when they're writing job descriptions your job as a potential employee of that organization is to follow directions and to make sure, right, that, um, you know, again, if you're not qualified, don't apply, don't waste, the, don't waste your time, don't waste their time. But if, but if, but again, if you have the, if you have the majority what they're asking for, absolutely apply. Very seldom does a candidate have 
the A to Z that they're asking for. Very seldom. Because those job descriptions can be blah, 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 blah. But again, as long as you have the majority, absolutely apply. I hope, I'm, I hope you, this, you understand this and that you do. Um, again, we usually don't have everything, but as long as you have at least, you know, again, most of the things that they want or have some, some proficiency, some knowledge, some experience. And again, you don't have to have, you know, a ton, but if you have some, that says something and it's good. So again, going back to kind of like, you know, your, your fast food jobs, don't ever underestimate or undermine anything that you have some experience in. And I've worked with students so many, you know, for so many years and I've seen it and I just don't want you to, if any of you are out there right now, we're just thinking, oh, I don't really have that. Not, no, list it and apply. But again, read, the, make sure you're, you read because if you don't follow directions, that's not a good, um, and always, always, if there's one thing I want you to absolutely promise me you'll do today or after you, you know, that you'll remember from this is always have somebody other than yourself review your materials before you send them, before you send your resume. I can't tell you, <laughs> you know, first of all, you know, what I, what I find in my work is students get really, you know, they see a job, they get really excited, they want to apply, which is great, you know. But they just get, you know, they want to apply like, you know, yesterday. And, but, you know, it takes time. Writing a resume, it takes time. And you want results, right? You want to get an interview and you want the job. So you really have to take your time and you have to have somebody other than yourself that you trust look at it before you send it. You have to, because you, you can't afford it. You can't afford to make a mistake on a resume and think that they're going to take you seriously and want to, want to hire you. You really can't today. I mean, you just, so, so just really take your time. But the good news is, is once you write a resume, you're just gonna, you're just gonna craft it and you're gonna edit it and tailor it to, to different positions. So, but they do take time. They're not something that you're gonna just sit down and write in 10, 15 minutes. And they shouldn't be, right? They shouldn't be. Your resume is a compilation of you and you want to make sure that you take your time and, and, and give it as much, you know, attention as possible before you submit it. 